Hey everyone, Sean Clement here, Wisdom in Golf for Golf WRX, and this week we're going to see why Tiger should be completely fine uh, now and in the future with his recent spine fusion. And obviously, out of the gate, he's looking mighty fine, isn't he? So let's look a little closer here at the base of the spine where Scully is, and you will see there is your sacrum. There's L5, the last vertebrae at the bottom of the lumbar spine, and this is where the fusion occurred. Now you'll notice that at the base of, you know, at the top of the sacrum, there is a facet joint. This is a, a brake system or um, a brake pad that prevents L5 from spinning out on top of it. It has about one degree or less of range of motion. And L5 has a built-in stopper and built-in facet joint to prevent L4 from spinning out, and so on and so forth. So the lower spine, even the thoracic spine, isn't really built for twisting or turning. It is a buffer zone and a protection chamber for your spinal cord. That is a protection system. Where the turning occurs is in the hips. That's where Brandel Chambly and I have been you know, very much in agreement as to how the human body should be moving in the golf swing. And the greats from yesteryear and only a few select right now on tour really understand intuitively how this works. I'm gonna shed a little more light on that and I'm gonna show you why that pelvis and rib cage move together on top of the hips for not just for golf, but for all sporting disciplines. So hopefully you'll see this in an entirely new light and you'll see why Tiger actually has a little more hip turn in his backswing, even though he's a little short of parallel. Uh, that's just a guy over 40. Now, trust me, I'm over 52 right now and my swing has gotten shorter over the years as well. It's just, that's just life. <laughs> it's not gonna prevent him from hitting it over 300 yards on a consistent basis. And if he plays his cards right and he keeps his, his strain level down, and his range of motion in his hips up, not the range of motion in the spine. You should, have, you should never touch this in the first place. All right, so let's have a look at why. If we look at a baseball pitcher, you'll notice that they won't be throwing with the arm only. There is this beautiful motion, huge range of motion, turning the backside to the plate so that there's this you know, nice kinematic sequence that starts from the ground up. So they go get the ground, they use the ground to get the body out of the way. So observe the pelvis and the rib cage. The pelvis and rib cage are moving together on top of the legs and hips. Same thing for a baseball hitter. Baseball hitter is not waiting for the pitch and trying to get that coil already. Uh, Johnny Miller even said it best when that X factor theory first came out a long time ago. He says, I feel my X factor in the downswing. So that's why you'll see baseball hitters, they're waiting here nice and relaxed. And when the pitch comes, notice how they, they bring that front foot up. And when they step, that's where that kinematic chain begins. The kinematic chain goes from the ground up not from the top down, okay? That is how we're built, that's how we're wired. If, uh, if you look at, you know, mixed martial arts or, you know, boxing, you'll notice that when the person's snapping the punch, they're always bouncing around because they're getting ready to use that ground to move the body out of the way. So you notice when there's a punch that occurs, the rib cage and the pelvis has to move out of the way, why? Your shoulders only have 20 degrees of range. Clavicle and scapula sit on top of the rib cage and they're just along for the ride. So right now, my shoulders aren't doing diddly squat. They're just sitting on top of my rib cage. The shoulders are a base from where the arm sockets hang from. So if I only had one arm and I was cutting some grass with one arm, I got 360 degrees of range of motion. You'll, you'll notice the fastball or the windmill pitching. There's beautiful range of motion in that arm. But if the body doesn't move out of the way, 
all you're going to do is smush the arms right into that rib cage. You're going to injure your shoulder. You're going to reduce your range of motion. And on top of that, the problem is that your arms get diverted offline. So if I'm trying to throw a ball towards you, notice how my body's got to get out of the way. If my body doesn't get out of the way. You're not getting a ball. Somebody else is getting a ball over there. Same thing in the direction of the target. That's why we say you need to clear the body. Well, that happens in both directions, everyone. So in the backswing, you're actually using the trail leg to move the body out of the way so your rib cage and pelvis are not in the way of your lead arm. So you can gather that nice range of motion. A wonderful exercise that we use is Imagine if you had a sword in your hands or a nice machete and you're going to take it in your lead arm and you're going to slash through a bamboo shoot or a sugar cane. So you gather that sword. If I don't turn my body, the whole arm collapses into me. That's where you get chicken wings. So we gather the backswing. Now it feels like I can use the weight of my arm and machete to slash through. Did you notice that I had to go get the ground? So the first thing the brain's got to do is go get the ground. Use the ground to get the body out of the way. Why do you think you have rotation? So if you don't have rotation in the backswing, you're stalled. You're going to have to force a rotation in the follow through. You're going to throw yourself out in front of the ball. You're going to use all kinds of effort. You're going to throw the center of your swing out of place, which means you're going to be crooked and you're going to be short. So gather that range of motion in the backswing. Notice how the pelvis and rib cage turn. See where that left knee comes? Right out of Brandel Chambly's book. This is what we've been teaching for 25 years. If your lead heel comes off the ground in the backswing, that's totally fine. Notice where my knee's coming. Now it feels like I can effortlessly slash through and very powerfully slash through. So gather the backswing so you can deliver with effortless power through the ball and in the direction of your target. So when you have rotation in the backswing, you get rotational momentum in that kinetic chain on the way through. This is what pulls the caboose all the way through the ball and out towards the target. It'll feel like you're doing absolutely nothing. So I want a target. I'm going to use a little draw from green to red. I line up on red, play the ball a smidge back a center, get behind the ball. Now I'm going to effortlessly whip the club to green or slash through my dandelion stem. This is a dandelion in disguise. So gather and release. So as my first swing of the day, that felt pretty darn effortless and it was very, very solid. I'll do that again for you. So we gather and release through. So I feel like I could do that all day because there's no strain involved. And for a 52 year old guy, you've seen my video on, uh, on the ping fitting that I did with the driver. I get to hit the ball over 300 yards, both sides of the ball, right and left. So we're obviously doing something right. Hope you enjoyed that.